Traveling Alone by Jason Isbell is capoed on the second fret and is in otherwise standard tuning, involving standard chords. It begins on a standard A minor. Um, the kind of embellishment that you hear him doing in this A minor in the intro during the strumming pattern is you hear him pick up his second finger and expose the open fourth string and then hammer back down into it a couple times. It sounds like... That's what he's doing in the intro and really in pretty much any of these standard chords you're going to hear throughout the album and live versions him randomly deciding to open and expose some open strings that would otherwise be fretted in the standard version of the chord and then hammering back down into it like this A minor that it begins on. And you can hear me doing that in the um, and the upbeats of those strums, like strumming down into the A minor and then picking up my second finger almost immediately whenever I strum back up. Um, so that's the A minor. Um, and then he starts singing the lyrics um, and out of the A minor walks down into the second chord, which is an F. And whenever I say walk, I mean that he moves there by including the G in between the A minor and the F, and it sounds like. So sometimes I play it with my pinky, sometimes I might pick up my ring finger from where it's at, leaving the first and second where, they're, uh, where they've been planted in the A minor pattern, and move the ring finger to the sixth string third fret, respective relative to the capo, to hit that G, so either. Um, and actually, I think that Jason Isbell probably moves that ring finger because as I just strummed through that, that sounded more correct with the open, uh, with the open third string there. So after you move out of the A minor, walk to the G and then straight into an F chord. And you're going to hear, I think, as he moves into this F chord, that, you know, a lot of times or sometimes it'll get strummed through with the third string open before you actually hammer with your second finger down onto the third string second fret. And then that's the same kind of pull off and hammer back on that you hear in this chord. Like that feel. So you've got an A minor, walk with the G to the F and then a standard four finger uh, C chord. And you've got the same kind of upbeat uh, feel going on there with the picking up of the second finger, exposing this time the open fourth string and then hammering it back on to the fourth string second fret. Like your, your second finger in this song is going to need to be pretty dexterous to get um, some of the open feelings. So you've got A minor, walk to the G to the F, to the C, to a G. Now here you hear another embellishment where whenever he goes to the G, he puts his ring finger on the second string third fret. Uh, I'm sorry, pinky finger on the second string third fret. Ring finger will go on the sixth string third fret. And you hear him walk down, moving the third string down to um, the third string second fret, where you put your first finger up here, and then open up the second string open, and then you play the second string fretted on the first fret again, and then open it up again in the G, and it sounds like. And that happens on upbeat. So I've strung down, and then whenever I move to this finger right here on the second string first fret. So it's an up strum on the second string first fret, and then open it up with your first string strumming back down through this G that now you've only got your ring finger on the sixth string third fret, and then you repeat that again.
goes back into the A minor. So that is the verse round. Um, and again, the embellishments are just random hammer-ons that are happening in your F chord, your C chord, and then walking down out of your G chord. Whenever it gets to the pre-chorus, it goes to an E minor, standard E minor, then to a D minor. In the D minor, you can hear another embellishment where he would pick up his first finger, exposing the open first string, and then hammering back down first finger into the first string, first fret position. So out of the E minor, the D minor, then to a C, I think it repeats again to the E minor. So that's the pre-chorus. Whenever you get to the chorus, it is a C, a G, an A minor, Then out of the A minor again, you walk down to the G and then go to F chord. So the G is not getting a full count. You're just out of the A minor, you're walking to the F by including the G. So A minor feels G, F. So, th so that you hear that again. Out of the A minor. Those are the chorus chords, C, G, A minor, A, G, F. Whenever it goes to the bridge, um, it goes to bar chords, which are not fun. And Jason Isbell kind of rarely plays bar chords, but this is what he's doing. I've watched a live version of him doing it to make sure that I wasn't uh, telling you wrong. The bar chord is going to be on relative to our capo, the one, two, three, fourth fret. So relative to the capo, you're playing the fourth fret. The real fretting would be the sixth fret. Uh, standard bar chord, major bar chord. So that's the first chord of, um, that is the first chord of the bridge. And he sings lyrics and then it slides up two frets to the relative 6th fret, real 8th fret, and then goes into a C chord, and repeats that. And then after the second time it goes into the G, and then back into the chorus, into the C, where there's, I think, a violin lead break. And those are the chords to Traveling Alone.